All right, now, Leanne, great to see you there. First of all, let's talk a little bit about the session so far. We are certainly feeding off that uh, positive lead-in from Wall Street. This whole lower for longer scenario in terms of interest rates really feeding the market, it would seem. Kate, that's certainly right and we are seeing a very strong performance today by the market and as you mentioned we did see those positive leads coming out of the US overnight. It did seem like investors uh, shrugged off that weaker GDP data that came through and of course they have shrugged off a lot of those uh, concerns around the tensions over in Iraq. We did see our market yesterday reacting uh, and investors becoming a little bit nervous around that violence in Iraq but it seems to have been shrugged off today. So overall the ASX 200 is performing strongly up around 0.7% at the moment. That is being dragged higher by that consumer discretionary sector, uh, staples as well as telecommunications. Telstra is a strong performer today. It's up about 1%. Another strong performer is the financials sector as well as materials. And of course we did receive, receive some higher commodity prices overnight in terms of iron ore, copper as well as gold. So we are seeing a lot of those stocks uh, performing well and dragging up that materials sector. Really the, the underperformer today is that property trust sector. Uh, but overall, it is a very positive day today. Let's also talk about one of the, the best performers I can see, and that is Palandon. What's going on here? It is one of the best performers on the ASX 200 today, up around 8% at the moment. And they have, in fact, uh, revised their mineral resource estimate for their Michelin Uranium Deposit, or Labrador. They have, in fact, successfully converted the previously inferred uh, resource to now a measured uh, resource. So uh, that me measured mineral resource has, in fact, increased by about 25%. So as a result, we really are seeing uh, investors liking this news and the stock is reacting acting positively today. But overall, uh, looking at the outlook on the stock, we do remain pretty cautious. Um, we know that they, their Kayla Kira mine uh, does still remain closed, really until we start to see a bit of a recovery in that uranium price and they uh, can return back to profitability. But we did see this uranium industry really being turned on its head uh, as a result of that Fukushima disaster back in 2011. And really since then, we have seen the bulk of Japan's reaction active fleet remaining offline, demand has slumped and we really have been seeing those uranium prices coming under pressure. We have in fact revised our near term uranium price down to around $33 so uh, not looking good. We, we're estimating a break even uranium price for Paladin of around $53 so you can see that spot price and our estimates is really well below their break even price. Uh, Paladin is highly leveraged to uh, recovery in that uranium price so really until we start start seeing that price recovering again, uh, we won't remain uh, optimistic on the outlook and uh, pretty cautious uh, going forward. Fair enough, but what about STW Communications? This one also performing strongly today. What's going on here? That's right, another strong performer today and they have in fact made an announcement that they have inquired acquired a company called Active Display Group which is in fact Australia's largest provider of retail marketing solutions. So it does look like a pretty uh, positive acquisition that the market is responding well today. It's going to cost the company about 35 million dollars. It will be uh, earnings, per sheet, earnings per share accretive and it also uh, will result in some revenue and cost synergies as well. If we have a look at that company Active Display Group that in fact does look like a pretty successful company on its own merits. Uh, calendar year 14 revenues came in at about $85 million. They've experienced uh, earnings margins of around 10% and they've experienced uh, earnings growth of about 20% uh, 20 per annum over the last uh, five years or so. So it does look like a pretty successful acquisition today and certainly the market is responding well. Uh, Leanne, to stick to the, the positive news, Monash IVF, this has made its debut on the market today at about midday. Shares surging uh, as soon as they, they hit the boards, it would seem. We're trading at a, a premium there. Now, this is the second IVF player to, to list on the Australian market. It's also the second biggest operator in Australia. Is this one still doing well? That's right, and it certainly is still doing well. We saw it coming on at a price of about $1.85, and it's up to a, around $1.94, so up around 5% at the moment, and certainly positive today, uh, which is very nice to see. Uh, as you said, it is the second largest uh, IVF uh, company to, to list in Australia. 
behind Virtus Health. We do know that the IVF industry is still relatively in its infancy, but it certainly does look like a growing industry. Uh, Monash IVF is expected to have a, a market capitalization of around uh, $428 million versus uh, Virtus Health, which has uh, a capitalization of around $694 million. Um, if we have a look at the performance of Virtus Health, when that first came on uh, back in June last year, it was a strong performer as well. That, that stock came on at around $6.07. It traded up and closed at $6.20. And that's actually currently trading up at about $8.70 at the moment. So it's up around 40% uh, since the, st the start of its trade. So if, if we can uh, go, if uh, uh, Monash IVF is anything to go by uh, in looking at uh, Virtus Health, it, it certainly does look positive. And, and as I said, we are seeing it uh, trading positively today. Leanne Jones, Bell Direct, thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks, Kate.